how to transport your migrated integrations to uh, your productive system. So in this video, we have on the video series, we first created a migration of an ICO to an iFlow. We then tested it and now we want to move it to production. And to do that, we would obviously need multiple CPI tenants. One would connect to our productive system, but we have created a way so you do not need to do that. And what, how that works is we go to the landscape settings. Here we create a new landscape, uh, CPI. We use this. Uh, it always have integrated transport management and then we select the tenants we have for the CPI. So in this one I have my dev system and I have my prod system. I can just select whether or not I want to have transport after approval. I can also decide whether or not I want to have approval in as a part of the, the process. Uh, for now we just ignore the approval. We have option here to define external parameters. So if we have a parameter that is going to be configured differently between uh, uh, between the different systems, you can, have, for instance, host name. They can be replaced with this uh, settings here. So this simplifies the, the the setup, but. Yeah, once we have created the landscape, we do not have an option to make modifications into it. So if you want to do something with it, you need to delete it and create a new landscape. So we created this uh, iFlow here. This was the one we created. Uh, I think we need to synchronize it again because there was um, made some modifications to it. Uh, and we deployed that after we tested. So now we have synchronized it. We got a new version of it and we can see we have two revisions of it. So we have a lot of options to do version comparison where we can select different iFlows. We can compare in a number of different ways. So we can look at this option and here we can see what is different with any object. So we can see here it had earlier had generated URL and now we have a migrated URL. So you can easily scroll around in the, the documentation and see what was changed. There's also a lot of other some message mapping comparison that diff to HTML is also quite useful if you want to see what kind of Groovy scripts, etc., uh, has been changed as a part of this. Good. So this comparison is available in a lot of different options. We can also select a given landscape if we have created that successfully. But what you need to do is you need to select the object and assign to a ticket. Invoice three. So we have a text for it. We can just select which landscape we have. If we have a DRA number or whatever, we can add it here. So we got some extra documentation about what is going on. We will need to get a license for this also for DevOps. And this is about to transport. And now we have created this. So we can see we have the object here. We say attach all dependent objects, which will link it to all the object that's a part of this, including the package. We can go to the test case here and we can see we got one test case here we can attach and that would be a way you can manage this. You can select to run it on the system and this will run the test case again in the course of this ticket, making it a lot easier for you to manage the process. And here after some time, we will get the result of this test case just the same way as we had with the normal testing. So we can see here, we got the results run here. One was delivered successfully and the other one had some errors in. And yeah, 
eventually we would receive the same result here. Um, and the idea is that to make it a lot easier for you to test the results that you're having. So now we have tested it. Uh, it will probably still fail uh, in this case, but that is not what it's supposed to be doing. We can send it to start the transport and this will handle the transport process all inside of the tool. So now it has created a transport and we can see the object we want to transport is the CPI iFlow. And here we have an option to see the different artifacts that we need to handle as a part of this. Uh, we can see the REST URL that could probably be broad. We have options to define all of these things and specify whether or not it's security content. Uh, and if, if there are any problems with finding security content, it would then give us a warning if this was uh, missing. So we can see we get a warning here saying this was not found on the system. Uh, so here we have an option to override all the settings or all external properties based in the full landscape. And this is also fully documented and added to the ticket. And what I can do now do is I can start the import. If I wanted to do approval also and had set that up, I would be able to set up approval here. Uh, notice as default, you cannot approve your own transport. So you need to override that setting and say, okay, we want to have uh, specific approval steps in this process uh, to handle everything that we need to do uh, for the transport. And that is, if you want to allow developers to overwrite the transport, you can do it in the application setting. There's a setting there. So now we can see we have imported it. It is using the same CPI tenant and adding some pre and post fixes to the different objects in this. So that means you actually have a virtual CPI QA or test system uh, that can, you can use for all the development objects. We can then go back to our transport, set it to be resolved. And that means that everything we had in this was uh, completed. Um, we can generate a report that contains everything that we had as a part of this. We can see that the test case here was a success. Everything panned out correctly. Um, and that is everything you actually need for a ticket. And we can then see here we have the iFlow that has been configured and it is then linked to this specific ticket, meaning it becomes a lot easier for you to see why an object has been linked and what it has been used to uh, in a given system. So that was what I wanted to share with you in this video about how you can set up a landscape to manage your migration scenarios. Thanks.